you are the world champions, you have that certain look. It's not something you can learn, it's something you acquire through greatness. And throughout this series, the Detroit Pistons have shown the Portland Trailblazers what greatness is all about. And the backcourt, they are proving to be the best guards this side of Buckingham Palace. When the Trailblazers brought this series to their home court, it was expected they would dominate. Instead, they learned very quickly how fast things can fall apart. If Detroit has the look of champions, Portland has the look of frustration. And now, down three games to one, they are looking at summer vacation. Since they began playing professional basketball, only two franchises have repeated as champions. And the headline Detroit is looking for tomorrow has three words, back to back. Rugged beauty of the Pacific Northwest has been the backdrop for this leg of the NBA Finals. Everywhere you look, there's a snapshot. And it's not easy taking care of the land, but they do it with pride and distinction here. And when they say this is Blazer country, they mean it. The land they are protecting tonight is right there, the Portland Memorial Coliseum. The Portland Trailblazers arrived here tonight hoping upon hope that they can get back into the series. It's not embarrassing, but it sure is serious being down three games to one. On the other side, the faces of the Detroit Pistons. They arrived three games to one up, and before the game, they pledged to get the job done tonight, and somewhere inside this building, they have champagne on ice. And so welcome to the 1990 NBA Finals, game five between the Detroit Pistons and the Portland Trailblazers. And good evening, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Well, here it is, the first championship trophy of the 1990s, and the way Detroit is playing, this could be gracing their trophy case in no time. There are three games left in this series, and all the Pistons have to do is win one before they hold this thing over their heads. Portland is in trouble. There's no kind way to say it. No team has ever come back from this deficit, and all the Trailblazers have to hang their hats on is that perhaps they can be the team to make finals history. And with that, let's hear from the coach who is standing by right now with James Brown. JB? All right, Patrick, and I'm sure Rick Adelman is counting on that. And Rick, despite the 3-1 disadvantage, you guys have pushed Detroit to its limits. You've reached deep into your coaching bag. Any tactics left at all? No, I don't think so. I think what we have to do is just do things better over a consistent game. Uh, we've had dry periods in the games that cost us wins, and uh, we know we could easily be up 3-1 rather than down 3-1, but that's where it's at. We know what that's how it is in the playoffs. We had the good fortune of being ahead in the other playoffs, so we're going to go out and try to play our game better over 48 minutes. Rick, you've been here as a player. You understand what inspirational speeches work and which ones don't. Did you have an inspirational speech this evening, or were words necessary? I don't think they were necessary today. I had a, We had a good talk yesterday. Uh, if I gave any type of speech, it was yesterday in practice, and uh, we talked about just spending the next 24 hours getting ready for this game, and I looked at the players today, and they seem to be ready, and tonight they seem very ready. So I think we all know where, where we're at, and we got to win this game or our season's over. We think if we can take it one more step, who knows what might happen. Best to you. Thank you very much. All right, as we get ready to go back upstairs to Pat, you might be interested to note that when I talked to the players in the locker room, they all said, J.B., we'll see you in Detroit on Sunday. Let's go back upstairs to Pat. All right, J.B., thank you. Now, if you are a Portland fan, turn away from your set and plug your ears because I'm going to show you a graphic about what this down 3-1 means. In the history of sports, only six teams have come back in the best of seven series being down 3-1. Five in the World Series, one in the Stanley Cup, and none in the NBA. One. Isaiah Thomas has exploded in this series and is playing like a man possessed. And his motivation is to be just like his best friend whose name is Magic Johnson. Having him to shoot at, uh makes me that much better. If he wasn't there, not only as a friend, but as a competitor to shoot at, I don't know if I would have gotten all out of myself that I think I've gotten. Um, having to compete against him 
has definitely made me a much, much better player. It's like we all strive to be like perfect. You know, when, when you go in, you're practicing, you, you want to be like a perfect basketball player because that's the only reason why you're practicing. I have gathered to watch television, folks. They paid a few dollars each to go in there and support their team on the big screen there. And it says live on CBS and all our fans there. Welcome to the game. We hear you fine out here in Portland. Back at the Memorial Coliseum. They've got some business to do as well. And let's go down to the PA announcer now. And here's Pat Lafferty. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Memorial Coliseum for the 1990 NBA Finals. And now, the starting lineup for Game 5 between the Detroit Pistons and your Portland Trailblazers. First, for the Eastern Conference champion, Detroit Pistons. At forward, in his ninth season from DePaul, number 23, Mark McGuire. At forward, in his 13th season from the University of Washington, number 53, James Edwards. Starting at center, his 10th season from Notre Dame, number 40, Bill Lanebeer. At guard, in his 5th season from McNeese State, number 4, Joe Dumar. At guard, in his ninth season from Indiana, number 11, Isaiah Thomas. And the coach of the Pistons in his seventh season, Chuck Daly. And now, for your Western Conference champion, Portland Trailblazers! And forward in his sixth season from Longwood College, number 25, Jerome! At forward in his ninth season from Maryland, number 52, Buck Williams. Starting at center, his fourth season from Eastern Illinois, number double zero, Kevin Duckworth. At guard in his fifth season from Wisconsin, Stevens Point, number 30, Curry. And the coach of the Trailblazers in his second season, Rick Adelman. Well, one thing is for sure, this Portland crowd is here in force, and they have not given up on their Trailblazers, who trail three games to one. Right now, let's send you over to James Brown. All right, Dick, as you just indicated, Dennis Rodman will not be starting for the Pistons tonight, but he will be playing some major minutes. Now, that's not what Chuck Daly would prefer. He'd like Rodman to rest on that sore left ankle and be used only as an emergency substitute. But Rodman has been lobbying all week long for the Pistons' brain trust, saying, fellas, I don't feel like I've contributed to this 3-1 advantage in any major way I must play. He's supported by the doctors who said his ankle is as good as it's ever been since the final started. So with the floating bone chips and all, Rodman wants to rock, roll, and play tonight. Let's get back over to this. Thank you, James Brown. And uh, the officials working this game number five, Daryl Garrison, Jack Madden, and Ed T. Rush. six all year the trailblazers in the regular season now the pistons have inflicted three losses or two losses in this series trying to make it three edwards and duckworth jumping controlled by the trailblazers well, let's see if they'll establish something down inside low early duckworth that's exactly what they're doing puts the Blazers in front. They've got to keep Duckworth happy in the early part of the game, Dick. He has the ability to get off, get the club off, feeling a lot of confidence, get the double team, and then hit the outside shooting. Here's James Edwards. The Pistons like to get him over. Early, but Lane Beer hits from outside to tie the score. 
Portland wants the pace up tempo. Detroit the other way around. Games one and two, they would start off right there with Buck going strong to the basket. And a loose ball foul has been called against Duckworth, who has been in foul trouble throughout most of this series. You know, it's uncharacteristic for them to be playing a team for any set period of time where they cannot dominate them on their own offensive board. Detroit has completely frustrated them by holding them to one shot. Jimmy Benson, Thomas, Dumars, and Johnson combined for 78 points. In game four, James Edwards. And the rebound by Drexler, and we'll have a foul called against the Pistons. And it will be against Joe Dumar. Anytime that Drexler is down in the in the post-up position, he has a scoring at a height advantage, and he also can help you on the boards, where he's one of their premier rebounders. He leads with 12 offensive rebounds, despite playing the guard post. Porter nice. with a pass in to Buck Williams. Couldn't handle it and a turnover. Aguirre has it for the pitch. close quarters, Dick. You should try to bounce past the ball in a situation like that. In the NBA, the players are so big that the player that's open cannot see the pass. This strategy is to come out aggressively against the Trailblazers. Aguirre, who struggled from the field in the last game, misses. And a jump ball. And Aguirre's right in the middle of it. Here we have a loose ball. Now you'll see the nice move by Kersey. You see Detroit is not afraid to go on the floor for anything which is loose. And they've been right up front in games three and four with that. Jerome Kersey and Mark Aguirre jump. It's controlled by the Blazers. And they're going to jump Great again, jump. according to Jack Madden. Both of these teams won 59 games in the regular season and split when they played each other. Kersey. He's having a terrific series coming off a 33-point game. Well, you know, he's been over 29 you know, about four or five times. He's definitely established himself at that small forward position as something to worry about. Two bars in the crowd, double team. Thomas is open. Here's Aguirre trying to get the shooting eye and hits a three his fourth of the series and the Pistons lead by one that's not a surprise because next to Isaiah Mark Aguirre is the best three-point shooter percentage wise jump trap and a turnover and a foul called against Porter I believe let's see if it is Porter it is that was a quick jump trap with Edwards coming into the play to help Thomas. Well, defensively, Detroit will always change up on you. They are trying not to give you the same look in any two quarters. Now, we haven't seen them trap on the wing before, but it definitely fooled Terry Porter. Here's Edwards. Rebound, Kersey. With more than two and a half minutes elapsed in period one of game number five. Porter beat Drexler. Percy and Drexler, the two-man gang, number four. Well, in the early going, Porter has been able to beat Isaiah off the dribble and get down in there and make some nice passes. Changing hands, Isaiah Thomas misses. Here's Percy. And now Drexler, open court for Clyde. Fouled by Isaiah Thomas. This is the type of game that you want to see from Portland. You want to see them force the turnover, get the rebound, and then get it up quickly. Now, here you have Porter. Now, watch as he splits, gets down inside. As soon as the double team comes, he's able to give it off to Drexler. Once again, we want to emphasize getting it to the big men. If you put it down on the floor, it's a lot easier for them to see it. Big series for Clyde Drexler. There are many who said he was overrated, but he proved those people wrong as he raised the level of his play in this NBA final. Well, he's been rewarded for the season by being picked on the third team all NBA, along with Joe Dumars at the guard position. Here's Portland's trap. Not the full one we saw the other night that helped bring him back. Edwards fouled, and the basket will count as well. That's the first time in the series, Dick, where we've seen them go to a 3-2. Like it's a matchup half court trap. And by that, any time that Detroit will come over half court, they'll use Kersey, who's in the middle of it, as the double teamer. We should be watching that as the first half goes on. Foul is on Buck Williams. 13 foul against Portland. Edwards, who has struggled from the line, this is here. He once again evaded 
back on his foul shot. They're trying to get him to stand up and follow through. Duckworth and Lane Beer makes a fine steal on the pass. That's the third turnover. Isaiah Thomas. And it goes through. So Isaiah gives the Pistons the two-point lead. The shooting is good for both sides. Here's the trap. McGuire was doubling Porter. Porter hit the three. Well, for Terry Porter, that's only his fourth three in this series. He's four for 17, where in series two and three during the playoffs, he's been able to really hit that one consistently. McGuire working against Buck Williams. And Duckworth made him change his shot. Might have even deflected it a bit. Blazers coming down, leading by one. Great pass to Kersey. Comes out to Porter, loses the ball to Dumars, and it's a two-on-one right now. Percy in it. And Aguirre will be called for charging as the trailer. Excellent defense by Jerome Percy. They had a two-on-one, then it became a three-on-one. Percy hustled back. Now you'll see it right here. Now there is an excellent move by uh, Jerome taking the charge that time. They've got to force some turnovers today, Dick, to get more shot opportunities. And, and let's let's hope that when they get to this end of the floor that they protect the basketball a little bit better than what we're seeing in the early going. Now Edwards is on Duckworth. Nice. Great move. You wonder why he can't do that every time down. Well, you know, you, he, they're not double teaming. They're having Edwards play a man-to-man, -man, and he's showing you a number of moves. Lead is three for the Trailblazers. Dumars gets by Drexler beautifully, but Buck Williams is there defending. It is still Pistons ball for the full clock. See right here, you'll see drunk. Watch Duck as he makes his move here. Now watch up and under, get the defensive man to commit, step underneath him, soft cut. He has beautiful hands, right? And by that I mean soft hands. Soft can be beautiful, and they are in his case. Just under seven minutes to go in the first. Two-man game here. Double team on Edwards. Wire does not make the pass. Lane Beer, quick shot from the corner off the side of the backboard. Percy tries to save it and does to Drexler nicely. Okay, Percy is everywhere in the early going. He struggled the first two games, but has picked it up the last two. Duckworth in great position, and Lane Beer gets a deflection and blocks it out of bounds. Good play by Lane Beer. See, Lane Beer is looking to help everyone out here. Now watch once the ball goes over. Yeah, you had Duckworth just pop Lane Beer right in the face with a forearm. But how about that for not losing your concentration? Lane Beer recovered, came right back, and got the shot blocked. Okay, but I prefer rap. Awesome. Wait a second. Shady Acres was supposed to get the Coke, and the frat house was supposed to get the Pepsi. Coke, Pepsi, what's the difference? I, 24. This is radical. To a young family like the Holstons, buying a house is a pretty major investment. Luckily, it's an investment they can protect. I'm State Farm Agent Greg Lemansky. Al and Holly had a lot of questions about homeowners insurance. We discussed them all, and State Farm had the answers, plus the coverage and a price that made them feel comfortable. That's a big part of our good neighbor service, helping people feel comfortable with their insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Did you know? that only 1-800 service automatically covers you if something keeps you from getting calls. With AT&T, you're always Hello? protected by our 800 assurance policy. Within one hour, we can reroute 800 calls to any working phone and any other office guaranteed. Yep. Reliability, another AT&T advantage. Call now for our special 800 offer. Ever do much hunting, Joel? Only on the Lower East Side, for bargains. They are getting excellent results. Already, in this early going, in 10 offensive trips, everything has been below the foul line. Portland's out-rebounded Detroit 7-1. 
They've been out-rebounded, the Blazers have, in this series overall. Drexler from the corner. Drexler has five. Duckworth, four. That's such a tough shot to block because Clyde gets up so high and then he has the ability to fade back on the release. Water is guarding Thomas. Lane Beer setting a screen. Thomas with a bounce pass picked off by Duckworth. And they're going to call the foul against James Edwards. And that'll be three team fouls for both clubs in the first. Give the big fella some credit moving his feet down in there. Duckworth, nice defense. Anticipated the pass as well as stopped the penetration by Isaiah. The lead is five. Shooting percentage, wide disparity. Clearing out for Porter against Thomas. Duckworth lost it. Plenty of time on the shot clock, though. Porter with a baseline. Air ball of wire out to Thomas. Blazers back defensively. Isaiah goes around Kersey. Block shot. Still has it. Now during the Portland defense, Ruby. They're, on they're doing an excellent job. Thomas missing outside. Rebound Drexler. Outlet quickly to Porter. He's got Kersey and Duckworth. He never gave the ball up. Buck Williams out of bounds. Piston ball. See, if he would have given the basketball up and got the ball into the middle of the floor to Kersey, they had a three-on-one situation. But by keeping it, the defense came back, and they were able to negate the advantage. Detroit has missed its last five shots from the field, trailing by five. Thomas from the corner. Oh, oh. Remember the corner shot the other night that gave him the lead for good. Huh? Well, they're changing up right now. They're having Joe Dumars run the point guard, and Isaiah is running all of the two-guard maneuvering off the baseline area. Order gets free inside. They're going to call Lee Beer with the push. Good call. Crowd loves that. It'll be the first on Bill. Nice, nice passing, inside passing now. Portland is delivering the ball to the guys for the shot opportunity. Lambeer that time definitely bumps Porter below the waist. Porter had hit 35 in a row in the playoffs before he missed. Bill has missed only two free throws. No! Well, you know, when you talk to their coaching staff, when they talk about uh, Terry Porter, you'll see that his, you know, the three-point shooting is down. He's only three for 16, and his playoff shooting is down. Uh, but you got to give credit to Isaiah Thomas for that. But when you talk to the coaching staff of Portland, they'll tell you Terry Porter is banged up. He has a sore Achilles, but, you know, he's given it all he has every night. Plus, he's matched up with Isaiah. An underrated defender, according to Rick Adelman. By the way, Porter now has four three-point passes, including tonight. Nine on the shot clock. Edwards working against Duckworth, does it beautifully, working baseline. Well, we've seen both pivot men pull off the same play. The fake, the fake jump shot up and under. Now Duckworth got three, misses the layup. Drexler found him, though. Drexler's making some great passes in this series. See, anytime that you're a big player and you have a chance to dunk the ball, when your opponent gambles, you should do that to demoralize him and discourage him from doing that again. Porter picks off the pass. Thomas intended for Dumar. Drexler. Thomas the rebound. The lead is three for the Trailblazers with just under four minutes to go in the first period. Oh, Thomas all the way in. Beautiful play by Isaiah. He's got six. Isaiah has run a stumble dir dribble twice today at the top by the three-point line, and both times blew by the defender. Off the hands of Drexler, another turnover. Look out. Look out here. Thomas releasing. Oh, and Rick it's now 17 to 16, the Pistons. Isaiah picking up where he left off. Buck Williams, who really needs a good game to come up to the level, powers in. Now, Bill Lambeer cried for the delay of game right there. Buck Williams was annoyed because he thought he was fouled by Lambeer as he took that ball to the basket. You know, in game one and two, Dick, they would give that to Buck out on the wing, and Buck would take Lambeer off the dribble. We have not seen that in game three and four. You're right. You're right. Yeah. 
Edwards wants Duckworth to pick up another foul. He got him too far out. Good defense by Duckworth that time. The reason why James Edwards keeps turning to the baseline is because that way they cannot double-team him if they should want to. Mark Aguirre moved his leg in, and that'll be the second personal against Aguirre, but now the Pistons are in the penalty. John Sally will check in for Detroit. Danny Young will come in at point guard for the Trailblazers. We also have Dennis Rodman coming in. He played just one minute in game number four in the closing seconds of the contest. His ankle feeling a lot better. Suffered the sprained ankle early. Here's Wayne Cooper. And Duckworth will leave. By bringing Rodman into the game, Chuck Daly told me earlier, he said that what they want to do is find out how much he can contribute, and let's have him find out early in the ball game. Danny Young will wait till the next dead ball because he will replace Porter at the free throw line now. <laughs> Porter has been a, a real spark in the first nine minutes here. Uh, excellent uh, penetration. Now here we have a 2-2-1. It looks like a little half-court trap. What they're trying to do is get Detroit out of there. Is that Excuse me. <laughs> well, that set wasn't too bad. You'll be as Dennis Rodman drove baseline and looked like he was elevating nicely. 20 to 19, Portland. First period. Plenty of time. 10 seconds. Rodman is guarding Kersey. Kersey fires up a three. Buck Williams gets the offensive rebound. That's the Trailblazers' style of the season, dude. And an offensive foul called against Portland. Down on Percy and Dennis Rodman in a collision down there. Both guys are fighting so hard for the offensive or defensive rebound. Percy picks up that foul, number one for him. Detroit TV program usually involving the guests of the opposite team. Now, as one of the most dapper coaches in the league, you might think it takes forever to look resplendent as he always does. But hey, folks, try seven to nine minutes later only. And Chuck Daly looking resplendent in his battle fatigue that we understand are reinforced in the seat of his fans. But hey, Chuck Daly seldom ever is coaching by the feet of his fans. And as we go back to Hubie Brown, Dennis Robin got some kind of warm greeting from Jerome Kersey, huh, Hubie? Uh, this is a battle. Anytime you have Rodman and Kersey. Now keep an eye on Dennis Rodman's arm. You see how it's locked right there? Now watch Kersey. He throws him. Now that's fine. It's to Harold Garrison, head of the officials, right on top of the play. <laughs> Kersey is appealing to Ed Rush. Portland also throw in a couple of turnovers the last three minutes which has contributed to the fact that their five-point lead has virtually evaporated. Open is Joe Dumars, has time to... Didn't hit the top, rebound by Cooper. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. And another turnover, and that'll be seven. Vinnie Johnson's going to come in the ball game. He has really come alive in the last two games with 21 and 20 points respectively after scoring only four points in the first two games. Sixteen pick and roll basketball here. Sally rolling to the hoop, nothing doing. Thomas scoops it, and he's getting a lot of those rim shots that finally drop. But he's the best. See, he's the smallest guy in this game at six foot one. He's totally fearless. He gets in the lane, makes it happen. But when he leaves his feet, he's thinking score all the time. Percy going in the lane. Oh. Rebound by LeBeer. Outlet pass, and it could be a three-on-two break now for the Pistons. Sally with a rare jump shot for him. And now you see why. Rebound Cooper. Well, I think that Portland would take that one. Anytime Sally and Rodman are on the break and they're trying to handle the basketball, you know, and end up with a jump shot with still 20 seconds on the shot clock. That's good air advantage. Here's Cooper. Right the team. Cooper has scored only seven points in four games. Yeah, but throughout his career, 11-year veteran, he's known for his shot blocking and rebounds, but he has always been able to hit the jump shot at the top of the circle, especially when he was with Denver. Here's Vinny Johnson. Ah! Missed his first shot. He hit his first two the other night, but a foul against the Trailblazers. 
That'll be their fourth team foul. And second against Buck Williams. See, one thing you, you must observe while, while uh, checking Lambeer's game. Anytime that a shot goes up and he's down on the base, you'll see he'll go behind the backboard, and then he comes out with his back into your chest, and he just pushes you out. And, and if you don't watch it, you get exasperated, and you go right up over the top of them or maybe push for an offensive foul. Cliff Robinson, the rookie and the second-round pick from Connecticut, replaces Buck Williams, who goes out with two fouls. Under a minute to go, 14 on the shot clock for the Pistons. Thomas will fire for a three and hit it. And Isaiah Thomas now with 13 points in the first quarter. How about the fact that he's 9 for 14 in three in this series so far? A big game player if you ever saw one. Robinson, this is the layup. And it's Cliff Robinson who is alert to get the loose ball. Just take their time. They did. Drexler threw up a three. They could have played for the last shot of the quarter. Now Detroit can. See, they had that loose ball with 17 seconds to go. You can help for the last shot. Isaiah Thomas off the glass, and Detroit with his biggest lead of this first quarter. And time runs out. It will not count if it goes. And Isaiah Thomas, once again, trying to make a big statement for MVP honors, 15 points. And that is the end of the first period with the Pistons leading 26 to 22. There's what he's done. Seven of nine from the field and a three-point basket as well. Portland had a five-point lead, but they missed a lot of shots, turned it over, and Isaiah got hot. Start of the second period. James Edwards in there for Detroit. Offensive foul called against Rodman. That'll be his first. See, that time... Rodman set the pick, but he moved before uh, the, def the defensive man had a chance to move, and he had a collision. Offensive foul, excellent. Now, here, here's Portland. They've been doing an excellent job below the foul line, Dick, but they're missing too many easy shots that could be automatic scores. Illegal defense against Detroit. John Sally was roaming where he shouldn't have been. He was just threw that on the floor for Portland. Trexler can take advantage of Vinnie Johnson anytime on movement coming across into the low post area. Vinnie just cannot play him down in there. Like right here. We'll see how many times now they triple team the leading. Danny Young open for a three and he turns them. See, this is a team that relies on catching the pass in the low post and pitching it out for a three, getting a second shot opportunity and passing it out for a three. Both teams shooting under 50%. No surprise in this series. Pistons by one. Thomas feels he can beat Danny Young in his own right. Edwards has it knocked away. Here's a three-on-two break. Cooper. Great block. Percy finally puts it in after Vinnie Johnson made a great block on Cooper. What a play by Vinnie. But, you know, it's nice to see Portland not assuming that he was going to make that shot, continue to crash, and get the second shot opportunity. Hey, that's their style when they won the 59 game. Edwards hemmed in by Cooper. And they're going to finally call Coop with the foul, but Portland has scored the first five points of this quarter. Now keep an eye to the right of your screen here. As Cooper goes down, watch Vinny Johnson. Look at that shot. The ball did not get up above the rim. And here's good following up. Two second shot opportunities. Well, you talked about what kind of a rebounding guard Vinny is. Not surprising he can do that as well. Runs into a double team. Uh-oh. See, Vinny's got a sore he's knee. Hurt. He's got the hyperextended knee, and he's limping. Duck's going to his bench, getting Joe Dumars ready. Thomas has it stripped from behind, and with two seconds to go, that's how much time the Pistons will have. Vinny goes out, and Dumars is in, but this is a big problem for Detroit right here. Now, right now, you have to look, uh, you only have two seconds on the shot clock. Watch for a lob to the front of the rim. Sally to Edwards, doesn't know the clock is running out. But an offensive board by Isaiah Thomas. Here's Edwards. James Edwards with six points now. Nearly two minutes gone by in the second period. When you think of all the offensive rebounding by Detroit, it's just incredible how many times it's Isaiah and Vinnie Johnson. Drexler strong to the basket. Cooper backs it off. I think Cooper's in there hustling. He's getting his hands on a lot of balls. You're right. He's looking the best he's looked in this final. Thomas for three. Oh. Does he have it? My Isaiah my Thomas. My. 18 points already for Thomas. 
I mean, good grip. And again, Detroit acting its biggest lead to Edwards, blocks inside. And here come the Pistons. Sally, not a good ball handler, loses his footing and is called for traveling. Good call. And Jack Madden has changed it to a kick. Excellent call by Jack Madden. He was tripped as he went down in there. There's no doubt about that call. We'll have a timeout. It wasn't the most graceful uh, foray by Sally, but he was definitely tripped. Time Hill, 21,000 plus, watching on the big screen. Game number five of the finals. They want to see their team win it tonight. That's their first choice. Second choice would be coming home to do it, but this is the hidden hero, the front court rebounding against the top rebounding team in the NBA this year, the Blazers. Those are Detroit's advantages in all the games off the board. Well, you know, when you look at that stat, Dick, you say to yourself, this is the team that scored 114 points during the season. Detroit is holding them to 100. has been applied to Vinny Johnson's left knee as he limped off before. He left the game without scoring. Terry Porter is checked back in for the Blazers. He'll be the off guard now because Young is the guard. Pick and roll, perfection by the Pistons there with Edwards. See, the Pistons are reading the trap real well right now. They're making the pass, but the guy who is rolling is going right to the front of the rim to make himself available. Duckworth came in the game along with Porter. Open, good touch for Duckworth, and he delivers it in. Well, Porter will overcome the fact that they have had five opportunities for dunks, and they're 0 for 5. You know, they could be out in front of this ballgame. Thomas off the screen. Wow, he, on he is on fire. 20 points already for Thomas, coming off a 32-point game. He scored 33 in the first game of the series, don't forget. See, Danny Young can't play him any better. He's right up on top of him. Ball knocked away is Young. Young got he, hurt. He got hurt, too. Percy goes up, and they're going to call the jump ball. He was tied up. Meanwhile, Vinny Johnson apparently is all right. He's coming back in for the Pistons. Better watch out now. That's the last thing the Pistons need, and the last thing Rodman needs, who wants to play. Well, see, Rodman wanted to spot uh, right in front of the basket. One, once the player takes that pos uh, position, you just cannot come over and knock them off. Now watch, see, here's what happens. See, Rodman is pushing Cliff Robinson. He's not going to take that from Rodman, and he wouldn't take that in Detroit's house. Never mind here at home. <laughs> Danny Young limped off, by the way. Drexler has replaced him. You see, that's a loss for them because Danny Young is an excellent defensive player. He moves the basketball. He's a good three-point threat, and he keeps everyone happy with ball distribution. In this series, Detroit has been excellent in cutting off taps that Portland has won. Thomas against Percy. Thomas didn't even jump. Porter misses a three. Rebound inside by Percy, and they're going to call the loose ball foul against the Pistons. John Sally. You see now on this shot attempt, keep an eye on the glass. Right down here. Here it is right here. And you'll see it. Boom. There's the crash. You know, Sally coming over. Sally and Rodman will take fouls. Drexler has it stripped away by Thomas. Goes right by Porter, looking for a teammate. Can't find one, and Vinnie Johnson hurdles the ball in the crowd and joins them to an extent. Great steal by Isaiah. Terrific transition defense by Portland by getting back. You'll be to get a feeling that the Blazers, as a team, made a pack that they're going to crash the board. They look like terrors off both glass so far. Well, they're doing an excellent job, but, but we know that Detroit is going to hold it off, and they'll send you a message every so often with some physical play, even if they should lose the rebound. Now, this is what we expect to see right here. Thomas intercepted. Edwards has it. Young, by the way, banged his knee. They expected he'll be back. Posting up is Edwards against Duckworth. James Edwards. Rodman with a follow-up. Tipped up against Sally, I believe. Or is it Rodman? I thought Sally. And it is Sally. 
batted down and a foul against Vinny Johnson over the top. See, if they're going to post up Drexler, they've got to do a better job passing him the ball. Now, here, here's the shot as it goes. Watch Sally come into your screen. Rodman first, and now Sally, they keep it alive, and then he comes right back with the pass. There's the offensive rebounding story. Portland with a slim margin. Isaiah Thomas goes out, having scored 20, replaced by Dumont. And Buck Williams is back for Portland. Buck is playing with two personals, by the way. Dumars trying to stay with Porter. Duckworth. Buck Williams with another offensive rebound. Duckworth ducking in again as he's on the other side against Edwards. Well, see, Edwards is determined to block his shot. Now, you know, Duckworth is showing us that he has four excellent moves. And he is very ginger around, around the board. He'll allow you to make your commitment and step through you. Loop it into Sally. He's got Drexler on him. Throws the ball away. Three on two break. Buck Williams lays it, misses it. I tell you, that's their sixth layup right. opportunity. Get six. They have missed a bunch inside. You're right. Porter. Fouled by Vinnie Johnson, his second. 13 foul against Detroit. This is a rugged game number five we're witnessing. Terry Porter has been outstanding. Right from the opening get-go, he's been going hard to the basket, creating for other players and himself. The spectacular Earl the Pearl Monroe leads the Bullets against the NBA champion Knicks in Game 7 of the 1971 Eastern Finals in New York. Dick Barnett explodes for 11 straight points in the first half. But it's Monroe who puts Baltimore ahead late in the fourth quarter. And when the Knicks' last attempt falls short, the Bullets celebrate a two-point close shave victory. Your role. We don't care who scores as long as we get the W, and we'll go to the people who are hot night in and night out. And then he underlines it by saying, and you better accept that <laughs> and accept your role if you expect to play. You remember the problems Portland had when they went to their bench in the last game. They're staying with all of their starters right now. Bill Lane Beer has come back in for Detroit. Double team leaving Buck Williams open. Rodman tips it to Lane Beer. Rodman's made a difference so far. Yes, he has. And, uh, we're not talking just from the defensive standpoint. We're talking about the fact that he's keeping a lot of balls alive for other people to, to pick up either defensively or offensively. Nice. Vinny Johnson, hard off the glass. Detroit had a mismatch going there because they had a guard on Lane Beer. Rodman on Duckworth. Duckworth now with 10 points to lead the Blazers. Oh, he has an excellent game from 15 out to 18 feet. He knocks that one down with a high rate of, uh, you know, a high percentage rate. Had the broken hand in the six games in the semifinal series. Well, this is one-on-one. -on -one. Now he calls for the pick and roll. Duckworth picking up Dumars. Now they go back. Vinny Johnson doesn't have the eye like he did in the last two games. Claimed he was fouled. Gets no respect on that. Memorial Coliseum in Portland, the scene of Game 5 of the NBA Finals. Portland trying to stay alive. <laughs> Rodman blocks it out of bounds, and right now trailing the Pistons by four. See, that's Detroit's fourth block in this first half, all on penetration off the dribble. Kersey. Lane Beer with his fifth rebound. About five minutes remaining in the first half. Portland shooting only 35% in this quarter. That is Vinnie Johnson down on the baseline. Boy, Kersey is guarding him and just denying him all the way. Sally hits the jumper. He'll still keep going to it. Well, you know, he likes that little baseline jumper halfway out to the corner. What they should do is make him put the ball down on the floor. Rodman picks up Porter on the switch. Here's Duckworth. He's been hot from there and remains so with 12 points. The reason why he keeps opening up is that Bill Lambeer is looking to help out. Double team, anyone off the dribbler in the post area, and Duckworth is now sliding to the open area of the court. Crowd on its feet now. 
Looking for the defensive play. Wait, Dumars misses. Out of bounds, and it's last touched by the Blazers. Not sure, it might have been Williams. Well, they, they put the ball down on the floor that time off the dribble, and it went right off of one of their own players, uh, the foot, right out of bounds. going to be Portland ball as John stepped on the line trying to save that one. You know, the Trailblazers have eight offensive rebounds, their trademark, but have put back just one for a basket. Yeah, they're, they're only four points down in this game. You consider how many layups that they could have made with, with a dunking in a strong most seat. Right here. <laughs> Lane Beer. That'll be a second. And the fourth team foul against Detroit. You'll see. Now, now watch Lampier now down, down inside. See, he grabbed on first, and then Duckworth cleared him away with the four on. The referee caught the first move. King of flop. Well, Lampier says, listen, anytime I hear the whistle blow, I know that I've committed a foul. And he said, I can't do anything about it. The key is don't lose, don't lose your composure and stay tunnel vision and know what's happening out there. Just under four minutes to go in the first half. Bad pass by Kirsty. Pistons by four. Portland led by five in the first quarter. Detroit had a six-point lead in this period. Kirsty is on Dumars. Lane Beer is wide open. And a foul. It'll be the third team foul against the Blazers. Beautiful sky here, and sunset is until... Oh, about 9 o'clock, I think, uh, Pacific time. Kind of a late sunset, and it's beautiful. Thomas is back in along with Rodman for the Pistons. Now, if you shoot it out on the floor, you know, you have I Isaiah and, and Lambeer become, you know, two of your main scorers here, or Dumars coming off a baseline pick. Thomas, the double team, misses. There's Dumars on the other side. Beat Kersey the ball. And a whistle. Now to hit the back backboard, they want to fix up the 24 second clock, I believe. Out of bounds. Side out. Excellent call by Jack Madden that time. Dumars against the taller Drexler. Now, Buck Williams was even bigger than that. Throws the ball away to Porter. Good anticipation because they know that Detroit loves to swing the ball to the opposite corner. Here's Duckworth. He's been hitting this shot all night. Misses, but Kersey is there for the putback. One of the few they've gotten that way. Yeah, but you see, you must be encouraged. They're working so hard. They're getting the opportunity. The shots will fall. And when you're coaching, that's what you tell your team. Keep working this hard. Good things will happen for you. Joe Dumars misses. Lane Beer puts it back on the weak side. And again, it's a four-point Detroit lead. Portland trying to up-tempo because right now the score is more to Detroit like it. Pick and roll Duckworth. Against Dumars, the guard, and he's got it. 14 for Duck. I say I love his game tonight. He is really aggressive with the basketball. Looking to score, wants to score. clock for the Pistons. See, they're becoming more aggressive defensively, but they have to do a better job after Detroit misses that first shot. Thomas goes in and is pushed down by Duckworth. That's a playoff foul and no hard feeling. That'll be Duckworth's second personal. Now you'll see he beats his man off the dribble. He's hit there. Then that's a good one. You're not going to allow Isaiah to lay it up. When you got it right, you got it right. Whether you're talking about this. On living room, but my skills on the hardwood are even better. Let's go back over the deck. Thank you, JB. And of course, Duckworth, with a good early start, this is his best start of all with 14 points already. And keep in mind, he's going to go to a nutritionist. He's very sensitive about the weight, but he's a fine young man. Came over from San Antonio in a trade for Walter Berry several years ago. Air ball thrown up by 
Isaiah Thomas, when was the last time you saw that? Everyone in this building, and look at Zeke laughing. I mean, everyone in this building is smiling. I mean, they can't believe it. Missed the second two. But once again, there's a Detroit guard to get that second shot. Rebound by Drexler. Thomas missed badly. Here's Clyde, lighting all the way in. High score. This is available for them. Anytime they attack and attack strong, they're scoring. Dumars, the basket will count in a foul, and Joe Dumars with his first points of the game, and it comes at a big time for the Pistons. We saw their six-point lead evaporate here. See, now keep an eye on the baseline. You'll see Drexler trying to fight through the pick. There it is, and Drexler just pushes uh, Mark McGuire. Drexler's first foul, and the penalty situation now for the Trailblazers. Next foul by Detroit will put him there. Aguirre off the ball, recipient of that foul, and it's now a 44-41 lead. Well, they're going to set a pick on the baseline for Drexler. See what happens there. Duckworth. Edwards. If it's Edwards, it'll be three on him. And it is. See, every time Duckworth steps into the lane area, Edwards is playing him for the jump hook, and he's trying to block the shot. Now, in the early part of the game, he would fake it like he did right there and step under. This time, he brings it up in the jump, jump hook position. Edwards fouled. I want to correct myself. That is Edwards' second foul. Right now, no one has three personal fouls in this game. John Sally replaces Edwards, who goes out having scored eight points. You know, when you look at Duckworth, you know, this, he's a second-round draft choice. He was 340 pounds in college. He's dropped 70 pounds. He's improved his game. He's worked so hard at it. And, and it's just beautiful to watch the contribution that he can make if you go to him offensively. Missed the free throws, though. He's out of Eastern Illinois, one of many players with small school credentials on Portland. Sally gets inside. David Greenwood, who's just checked in for Detroit, picks up the loose ball foul. Greenwood played well in this series. Seeing a lot of action in games three and four. See, if you're coaching Portland tonight, you're happy with the way your team is working at the offensive end of the floor. You're happy with the aggressiveness on the offensive court. The thing which is standing out as the major weakness is they cannot contain the defensive rebound. Now, sure, they got a loose ball foul here right now, but Detroit is smacking them around and getting a lot of second shots. And if you're Detroit, you're happy that you are in a tight game on a team that knows it needs three straight wins to win a title. The more you stay with them, the better the Pistons' chances are. Well, look, when we talked to Rick and his staff before the series started, he said we do not want to play an 80-plus point game. We want that game up around 100. It's an 80-plus game right now. Six on the clock. Dumar sets for the three. Some of Detroit's shots from outside have been way off the mark tonight. Buck Williams. And they're going to call the push. Offensive foul. To give Detroit a lot of credit because since they've been out here, game three, four, and five, they put their bodies in front of the penetrator looking for the charge ball. Three fouls on Buck Williams. He's the first for either side to pick up three. Cliff Robinson has come in for him. See, the cardinal rule is when you're on the fast break, know who you're giving the basketball to. Don't give it to the big guys out, out past the foul line because they have trouble dribbling and getting off a good shot attempt. Difference of about a second or so between the shot clock and game clock. Thomas with a high arc. There they are again. Aguirre. Greenwood taps it to Aguirre, and he's fouled, but again, Detroit is doing a tattoo number on the uh, offensive board. The Aguirre's upset. You see, he's really upset because he got pounded that time. Now, you'll see. Now, watch David Greenwood keep this alive. He has done a terrific job in, in the action in three, game three, four, and five. Now, what we're seeing is this total frustration by the Portland team in trying to rebound their defensive board. Here's Aguirre on the free throw line. Foul was on Drexler, his second. Two tenths of a second remain in the half.
do it. So the Pistons had a four-point lead after one quarter, and they still have the four-point lead. And Kevin Duckworth had a very impressive second period. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Pistons 46, the Blazers 42. Pat O'Brien will be along with the Prudential at the half after this message. The Trailblazers are locked in a fierce struggle these days, but to a man, these players know this is nothing compared to the challenge one of their teammates faces every day. For Ramon Ramos, the struggle does not end this week or next. This fight will last a lifetime. When the season began, Ramon was a promising rookie with the Trailblazers. But on December 16th, his dreams of a successful NBA career were shattered out here on Interstate 5, just south of Portland. That night, Ramon lost control of his car and ended up in a coma for three months. In the days following the accident, the prognosis was grim, Ramon's mere survival in doubt. Now, barely six months later, Ramon is preparing to move back to his apartment in the next few weeks. Armed with his father's endless encouragement, Ramon is walking, talking a little, and learning to take care of himself. The fact that he's improving now and improving so rapidly and has actually recovered um, fairly well at this point is, I think, in his favor. He is able to communicate some of his basic uh, wants and needs, and he's showing some excellent progress. I am very pleased with his progress, but it's still a long way from where he was functioning prior to his accident. For Ramon, functioning always meant basketball. He was on Puerto Rico's Olympic team. Last year, he was part of Seton Hall's Cinderella season. Even though Ramos never played in a Blazers game, he was and still is very much a part of this team. With physical reminders and emotional ties, the Trailblazers always have a message for him. Uh, I would tell him, you know, keep fighting, which he is doing. Uh and um, keep progressing and working hard at um, what he's doing, and he's doing well. Hang in there, and, and we're praying for you, and, and we just hope that you overcome uh, this obstacle in your life. While the Blazers follow Ramon's progress, he watches theirs. Recently, the old Seton Hall gang, coach P.J. Carlissimo included, traveled across the country to take in a televised playoff game with Ramon. Ramon, he, he, he likes he like watching you know, the game, the Blazer game because he recognized every, every player. This weekend, I asked Ramon if Portland would win the NBA championship. Yeah. Yeah? They're going to do it soon. They're going to mm -hmm. do it soon? Personally, Ramon Ramos already has scored plenty of victories this spring. Victories that strengthen this young man's determination to walk away from tragedy. Joyce, CBS Sports. If that isn't a profile in courage, I don't know what is. When we come back here on At the Half, we'll talk live with Boston's Chris Ford and the new coach of the Lakers, Mike Dunleavy, as At the Half rolls on from everywhere after a commercial. Lucas passed the ball away, keeps it alive. Over to Warden. Lucas for the steal. Warden. Oh, Lucas for the steal. Warden. 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 Frazier goes behind the back on Maravich, has the step, and beats him with the left hand. NBA action has always been fantastic. For through the new kids on the block. In Boston, Chris Ford is now Larry Bird's coach. In Los Angeles, Mike Dunleavy is in charge of Showtime, and he joins us from Fort Worth. Gentlemen, welcome to At the Half. You guys, Detroit, Isaiah Thomas with 20, and Kevin Duckworth with 14 are not only the leading scorers for the respective clubs, but they are the only players in double figures thus far. And we want to remind you that baseball returns to CBS on Saturday as the races appear to be heating up at all four divisions. The Red Sox against the Orioles in Memorial Stadium and the San Diego Padres against the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium. Jim Cott and I will be there Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Jack Buck and Tim McCarver will be in Baltimore. So tune in to Major League Baseball and as it returns to CBS this weekend, Saturday. Start of the second half. Well, a high pick and roll situation. 
Detroit has really been reading the mismatches any time of a double team. Edwards going in strong to the hoop. Took a page from the Portland Trailblazers who missed a lot of layups inside. He missed one. You're, you're Portland, you like to see more movement. You like to see people go strong to the hole. Umar is picking up water on the switch. The basket by Duckworth in the foul. He's now 8 for 12 from the field. So the big thing, Dick, is every time that they beat Detroit off the dribble, they've been able to hit the pass. Now, you'll see right here. Now, watch the Detroit defense come. Now, you see he's picking out Port, uh, Duckworth very easily. Tev uh, Porter is making the pass to the free guy because he's right in front of the rim. Lane Beer with his third foul. So Lane Beer and Buck Williams of Portland have three fouls and Duckworth with 17 points. Now, this is the first time that we've seen the full court press. A one, two. Lane Beer from the corner and yesterday in practice that's all the Pistons worked on just like it was the first day of practice for a high school or college team. Well, they didn't know that the corner shot is open, Dick. And then also, if it's not there, get the ball into the middle and look for the layup. Williams inside. Four points for Buck Williams is playing with three. Foul. See, if the big men will establish early in this quarter that they can convert the power plays, this will be such an uplifter for the Portland club. Turnover by Joe Dumars. And an opportunity now is Daly not pleased with the opening moments for the Pistons for the Blazers to take over. Well, neither coach is uh, very excited about the fact that they're up in double figures in the turnover department. Duckworth, see if he sees if the magic's still there with the shot. The boys who stretch there beautifully. They should get out of the way and let Drexler take Isaiah. Draws the foul. Isaiah Thomas. That'll be two. Like we said at the beginning of the series, that the teams that win the finals are the ones that make the quick adjustments. The teams that play intelligently, and by that we mean any time that you see a mismatch, a decided where you know your guy can take advantage, you've got to allow that person to operate. Get out of the way and let him take that individual to the hole. He said it all throughout the series as Drexler misses his third free throw of the game when Drexler had an opportunity against either Dumars or Vinny Johnson. Wasn't always taken advantage of. Thomas gets the basket and... Let's see. No basket. A foul. And Thomas has picked up his third. The Duckworth is doing a nice job in coming over and cutting Isaiah off and taking the offensive charge. Lane Beer and Isaiah each with three. And Duckworth stays red hot. 19 points. Matches his season high. They're doing a real nice job in recognizing what is going on. If Detroit continues to trap the pick and roll, then Duckworth is always open. Timeout, Detroit. <laughs> You'll be you surprised if they're playing both Lane Beer and Isaiah with three right now? No, not at all. Because they'll go until they get their fourth, and then they'll set him down. Uh, Chuck, Chuck understands there's two horses out there right now. Kersey, long range. And another rebound for Lane Beer. That's nine now in the game. Aguirre. Now Portland. The up-tempo now should favor Portland, but they must push. Porter for a three. That's his second of the game. Nice to see him have the confidence that he would launch that shot off the dribble with only two white shirts over half court. You know, he hasn't made a two-point basket. The three throws and three-point baskets. In and out by Dumars. Thomas caused the turnover. They got three on two, Detroit, and Mark McGuire throws it away. Well, we just had two major turnovers, and Chuck Daly thumps it all up right there. First of all, a bad pass out on the pitch out into traffic, and then you turn around and you have an advantage, and you throw a blind pass. Duckworth has been a hot man. Lane Beer with 
Thomas, he's got Edwards and Aguirre. Low pass, Edwards lost it. Another turnover for Detroit. They're about even in this game. Porter hot for the three. And Lane Beer now with his 11th rebound. Now, if you're watching, you're saying, why? Why shoot all these threes? Well, during the course of the year, Terry Porter is excellent at that. And let's face it, without those shots, they never would have survived round two, never mind round three. McGuire hits, but of course, round three is Detroit. And it's a little tougher than the teams they play round four is Detroit, tougher than what they played early. One point lead, Pistons. Williams with a great pick on Thomas. Great pass, Porter to Buck Williams. Beautiful pass. When you make the catch down inside, gather yourself so you can make a strong move. Lane Beer has five boards. No one else has a rebound in this period. Dumars foul going in, and that is the first foul for Portland here in the third. Now here you have a pick and roll situation. Here's a good pick on Isaiah by Buck. Now as Buck Williams goes to the glass, look at the delivery. There's your pass. Isaiah behind him. Gathered. Strong move by Buck. Second foul. I want to go through all the abuse at some point. Um, I know someday it'll break me mentally, and when I get broken mentally, it won't be effective on the basketball court. Um, I have not yet reached that point. Uh, but I sat down with Isaiah, and he talked about numerous reasons why I should keep on playing. Monetarily is one of them. Uh, you can't make this kind of money anywhere else. And the second reason is uh, my camaraderie with all my teammates. Uh, I can't leave them let them hang at this point. You'll see now on this shot attempt, now just watch him working. See, we know that he's not a big jumper, but he is a contact player. You cannot be one of the great rebounders of all time in this league without accepting body punishment. And I love it when he talks about this team. Hey, we all have our roles, and we do them without complaining. Chuck Daly tells me, I'm the board man. I do my job. Cliff Robinson is in the game now for the Trailblazers. He is the only rookie on either side in this NBA final. Joe Dumars having a rough time from the field and now struggling from the line. Dumars only two points. Vinny Johnson's been flexing that knee, by the way, over on the side. He has not come back in this half yet. Well, Joe suffered in that first half. He was one for seven. Most of his shots were hard and off to the right of the rim. Edwards meeting Duckworth. Knocked away by Edwards. Out of bounds. And it's a turnover. Detroit ball. See, sometimes Duckworth just gets a little anxious. You know, I was talking to him before game four. Uh, just stay with the pass. We were discussing things. He said, yeah, I get excited because I know I'm going to get a good opportunity and I'm going to be played one-on-one. -on -one. Edwards lost the ball at the other end. Pass came in off his hand. Duck Daly Pistons in a tie, 55-55 with the Blazers with 6.15 to go in the third. You were having very poor passing the post people who are open. You're getting an awful lot of turnovers on the initial pass. Porter has hit three and hits another one. That's his third of this game. 13 points for Terry, who's been a little quiet here in Portland. Well, you know, he's been struggling from a shooting percentage-wise and then also from long range. And he's been guarding Isaiah Thomas, which has not been a happy time. But it's so nice to get him get him going because not only does that type of a shot, the long three, excite the crowd, but it also picks up the ball club. Porter was 39% shooting coming into this game five. Five on the shot clock for the Pistons. Here's Aguirre. Robinson, the rebound. Three-point lead for the Trailblazers. Beckworth didn't have control. Crashing the board. You can hear the exclamations inside. See, when you get rebounds like that down inside, the move has got to be a stronger move. You gather yourself that you take advantage of your upper body strength and you take the defenders right to the board. Push. That's McGuire's third foul. 
And the third team foul against Detroit. Dennis Rodman will be checking in. And he'll replace Mark Aguirre, whose biggest scoring game was game one with 18. Well, you can see Cliff Robertson never stopped moving on Aguirre that time, down on the baseline. Williams working against Lane Biro has three fouls. Loose ball, Cliff Robinson picked it up. Picked it up. And Lane Beer finally brings it down. Here's Dumars, up tempo. Isaiah Thomas pulls up with it. Dumars and Duckworth. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Dumars wants the one and one. He knows he has the big man. Dumars really having a rough shooting game. But there's Rodman. Edwards fouled and fouled hard. See, Detroit's not going to complain about that because yeah, he got injured right across the, the face that time on the hit. Yeah, no, nobody's going to complain. And he's falling down. Timeout call Detroit. Now you see, now watch as the pass is made to Edwards coming down the lane. Two guys get him. There's your first right there, and then the second as he came across. Now it might have been on the swipe by the player who came behind that time. Buck Williams will be charged with his fourth personal foul of the game. First player in the game to pick up four. Part of his eyebrow. It did, in fact, inflict a deep gash there. The doctor says he will not require stitches right now. They'll wait until after the game. And I can tell you from the old street fighting days, if you get a good knock across the nose, that will force you and cause you to be dizzy and fall backwards as James Edwards did. Let's go over to Dick. No, nah, not you, James Brown. <laughs> Four fouls on Buck Williams. And Edwards will go to the line. He missed his only free throw tonight. James has been struggling all throughout the playoffs. In this series, he's shooting less than 55% from the foul line. He's had an awful lot of opportunities there. Two-point lead for the Trailblazers with that much time remaining in the third period. Game number five of the NBA Finals with the Pistons leading three games to one and needing one to wrap it up. Portland wanting to win one at home to stay alive. Here's Duckworth. Gets his own rebound and it away. And it'll be a Piston foul, apparently. Or is it side out? Side out. No foul. The ball was hit and it went behind the backboard and hit back there. Consequently, you get the ball out of bounds on the side. That was an excellent shot by Duckworth and follow-up to keep the ball alive. Portland's been a little cold lately from the field. Gretzler uh, takes care of that. They have missed five in a row. See, we have not seen that explosion from, uh, from the side area. That time, he just made up his mind to take his man to the basket. He's got 11 now, Gretzler. Detroit starting guards have outscored Portland by one. Vinny Johnson will come in along with Sally at the next dead ball. Six on the shot clock. Ball knocked away. Thomas fires a desperation three, and what do you know, hits another one, and that is his third of the game. That's been the story of the series game three, four, and five. The incredible ability to make the shot as the clock knock is out, and more important, for three. 25 points. For Thomas, Detroit, fourth foul. There's Vinny Johnson and Sally in there now. now. You see Drexler come off of the first pick, second pick. That's what we mean by stagger. Look at that step. Edwards will go out and work on that eye, and Joe Dumars, who's having a Kind of an off game thus far goes out. Foul was on Rodman, his second, fourth team foul against Detroit. 
the referees are concerned with uh, a lot of sweat that has happened right in the red area in the lane. Valley on Drexel. Yeah, that's good and a foul. What an explosion there. That's his game, Dick. Anytime he puts it down and attacks, even if you are with him, he has the ability to get so high up in the air. Now watch how he plays this last. Look at that. He came right up underneath. Even if Sally stayed with him, he would have knocked him off the front of the rim. Pistons in the penalty. Sally with his second foul. And it's a four-point lead in favor of the Trailblazers. It's always nice to watch an offensive player read the defense perfectly and then execute. See how Detroit responds to this challenge. Thomas hits a jumper. 27 points now for Isaiah Thomas. Getting close to three minutes to go in the third. And Porter is hit and fouled. Sally, another foul now. How about this? Now just watch. Watch how he takes the Spider-Man off the dribble. How about this elevation? Look at the distance. Bam. Beautiful. Porter, four for four at the free throw line. Clyde Drexler was in the middle of those slam dunk contests long before the Trailblazers became a finalist in this league. That's right. Rare miss for Porter. Well, the people are groaning. You know, he's right there. He's sixth in the league in foul shooting right at that 89% mark over the season. And then we all know that he ran the string 35 straight in the playoffs. Pistons knowing that Vinny Johnson hasn't scored. Dumars has three, and they're only down by three points now. 64-61. If he watch Vinny Johnson to see if he comes off for the pick gingerly. Now, see, he's hobbling. Cliff Robinson is denying him anyway. Sally goes up, has it knocked away. Rodman. And Rodman... Such an intelligent player, knowing great awareness where the ball is, draws the foul. Once again, the loose balls that go to the floor, the blue shirts have dominated in getting to them in games three, four, and so far in game five. Effort play. Technical foul has been called against Jerome Kersey and Bill Lane Beer, a double team. Uh, Lane Beer and uh, the referee, Darrell Garrison, having a few words. He lost it. He lost it too. He lost it too. We'll see it right here. Up, oh, there goes the ball. All right, Kersey hit him in the back of the head. See, all you're doing is, is, is you're instigating things. And probably that's what Lambeer said. But we might be catching the second part of the action right now. Danny Young is in for Portland in the backcourt. Rodman only 55% playoff free throw shooter. Not better than he used to be, though. See, sometimes he just gets up to the line and throws it up there without concentrating. It's the boat. Had the ball and lost it to Danny Young. Portland by three. Drexler again. That far, that time it was Sally with his defense. Well, they got some on the trap. Did an excellent job. Thomas loses his footing and his goes out of bounds. Claims he was pushed. Well, he was bumped on the dribble. But in this type of a game, there's an awful lot of bumping on the dribblers, no matter where they are on the court. So it has been consistent at both ends of the floor. Detroit not protecting the ball as well this period. Drexler, no basket of foul. See, in this matchup, Drexler versus Vinny Johnson, first of all, he can't play him even if his knee was perfect because he can stay with him maybe, but Drexler jumps over the top of him. Now, with Vinny with an injured knee, it's almost impossible. Drexler senses this, and he wants the ball on a clear out. If you've just joined us, we're at the Memorial Coliseum in Portland, 12,000 strong. The Portland Trailblazers trying to draw closer to the Pistons, trailing three games to one in the best of seven. Detroit knowing a win here wraps up their second straight NBA crown. In the second half, Portland doing a much better job on the defensive board. Vinny Johnson really doesn't have footing out there. Fell down. Lane Beer 
Valley, the offensive four. Orland matching their biggest lead. Babel is back in the first quarter. Thomas tries to force a pass. Here's a four on two break for the Trailblazers, broken up by Dennis Rodman beautifully. Once again, a careless pass. Two on one, Valley. Couldn't hold on to Thomas's pass. We are seeing careless ball handling. Vinny Johnson is fouled. <laughs> when you coach in a game like this, you just sit and you shake your head. I mean, we are seeing so many crazy things here in the open floor. A four on two, we get a blind pass into a turnover at one end of the floor. At the other end of the floor, a perfect pass on a two on one. Miss. Now here we have, now watch, watch Rodman hustling, hustling, hustling. But you see, when you throw a blind pass, you're not giving credit to the defense that's hustling in transition. Vinny Johnson with his first point of the game. Dumars will give Isaiah Thomas a rest. Thomas goes out with 27. Vinny Johnson, who scored 41 in the last two games, having a cold game thus far. One out of two. Four-point lead, Portland. They're trying to bring Drexler to the side. There you go. Duckworth against Lane Beer has a few fouls. Lane Beer finally gets the rebound. See, 14. When Drexler fed Duck Duckworth, he went right into the middle so that he'd be on the offensive board. He had one opportunity there. Rodman, good pass to Dumars and a foul. Both teams in the penalty now. And for Drexler, that'll be his fourth. So Buck Williams and Drexler, both now hampered with four persons. You know, right now with a minute to go, an awful lot of coaches in basketball, high school, college, and the pros would take out their star player now, hoping that he does not pick up his fifth. But when we saw this happen in games one and two, Rick and the coaching staff at Portland, they have confidence in Drexler because they say he wants to stay on the floor. Pistons really having a rough time from the line as a team tonight. Under a minute to go, 16 on the shot clock. There's a clear out. Drexler. Rebound by Rodman. Portland will get the ball back. go to the line to shoot too but this has been an Achilles heel for the Pistons they are shooting 44 percent in the game from the free throw line Ubi. Young with the foul well coming into this series both teams were low foul shooting teams in the low 70s but we have seen them get hot in different games and shoot up around that 80 mark the thing which is interesting so far is any time that you're trying to come off of a pick and roll with the basketball, there is so much manhandling, bumping and grabbing of people that they're not allowing anyone to turn the corner and get to the basket for an advantage. This is not a game in which the three guards are exploding for the Pistons as they have the last two. See if Detroit can win nonetheless. They're locked in a tight game down by one. They'll get the ball back, though. But remember, the Portland coaching staff, this is Detroit Temple that we're playing at right now. Seven on the shot clock, quarter. Too far under. Rodman in the middle of it, and we're going to have a jump ball. Say, Rodman's ankle has to be feeling a lot better the way he's elevating and jumping around tonight. This is a war between two really great athletes. Now you'll see this move right here. There was no, no shot opportunity. Terry's behind the board. Now look at this. These two guys have been fighting every minute when Rodman is on the court. Percy and Rodman. You, you just have to enjoy it as a fan. Porter with a quick three. Yes. And he wanted to foul. Thought he was hit on the shot. He's got four of those tonight for 17 points. Vinny Johnson to Rodman. 
no basket. Time has run out. Let's see if there was a whistle and a foul. Chuck Daly is going over to the scorer's table. Chuck Daly, you could hear a whistle. Now, was that whistle on the floor? Did it come out of the crowd? That's what Chuck Daly's all upset about because they thought that they had a foul on Vinnie Johnson out high at half court area. An eight point turnaround from halftime till now. And that's the end of the third period with the score. The Blazers 69, Pistons 65. And again. Soon as somebody touches it, McAmore. For your copy of the official wow. NBA World Championship video, wow. call 1-800-683-9600. That's 1-800-683-9600 wow. for the NBA World Championship wow. video. Only 20. Third quarter, 27 points. They are protecting the basketball, doing a little bit better job there, but the main emphasis is their defensive rebounding, doing an excellent in that area. Outscored the Pistons by eight at Portland despite 39% shooting in the quarter. Danny Young and Terry Porter with Cooper, Kersey, and Cliff Robinson. Porter almost had a bank three that time. And you know he called bank, right? Come on. I heard him. <laughs> he players the crowd. I heard players him. before the game were doing all of that. Calling, you know, calling the shot when they were warming up. Rumars and Vinnie Johnson with Edwards, Callie, and Rodman out there. Five on the shot clock. Callie. Rodman tipped up by Sally. This is having trouble passing the ball inside tonight. This unit out there now, it's Kersey and Porter are your primary offensive players. There's the shot clock up. Edwards pushes Danny Young, and that'll be his third. Ted foul that time by James. Anytime you're out in the open floor, the shot clock is going down. If you make a switch, force the guard who is much smaller than you to show, shoot over the top. You're seven foot with long arms. They're working hard to get Porter open. He's open. It's another it's a two-point shot. 19 in the game. He and Duckworth lead the Blazers. Well, you know, Dick, this is the best that we have seen him shoot since the San Antonio series, where he had a lot of confidence coming off pick, shooting a three off the dribble. Portland has its biggest lead of the game. Edwards, not to be denied, relentless, draws the foul. I, I like his aggressiveness tonight off the dribble. Anytime that he's on the right side of the lane facing the basket, he's putting the ball down hard and taking it into the lane. If he goes for the left-handed little baby hook shot, he'll either score or he'll get fouled. Jerome Kersey with his third personal foul, and here's Edwards like Many of the Pistons having a rough night from the line. He's one for three thus far. See, when he stands perfectly straight up, as he bends his knees, it comes up and releases the shot. The coaching staff of Detroit said when he follows through, everything is fine. It's when he ends up fading backwards is when he usually has the miss. Ends up fading backwards is when he usually has the miss. There you go. He's been in double figures all but game one. Waiting for his chance again is Isaiah Thomas. He's got 27, does he? Porter with a move against Dumar. Kersey blocked by Edwards. No pending call. Kersey gets the hoop. See, on all the penetration, Porter's been able to get down inside and make the pass. Look at this pass. Now watch the pause. See the pause? He paused, gathered himself, Kersey, on that shot. Joe Dumars with a stutter going in, blocked inside. Edwards follows up. Now that's the way to get a second shot of <laughs> I think he's really aggressive. Well, you pointed out, Porter misses a three. Young. It'll go for him. Dumars wants a 20-second timeout. Got hit in the eye. And he's going to get it. Well, they've been working him really hard off the wall of picks. He's been working to try to prevent 
Porter coming into the open area off of one or two picks. It's going to be a full timeout. A war of attrition. That's what this game and maybe this series is going to come down to. We've been waiting for a long time. That's where Dumars had the injury to his left eye. So we have Dumars with the eye, Edwards with the cut, Jim Paxson. Had many, many a big scoring year here as a Portland Trailblazer. Let's send it over to James Brown now, JB. All right, Dick, not an awful lot of talking in the Detroit huddle that time. As a matter of fact, all the players know sign language. Assistant coach Brendan Malone did two things. He pointed to his heart, and he pointed to his championship ring, and he smiled at him. Let's go back to this. That's all you need to do. See, from now on down, we have nine and a half minutes, Dick. We know that there's going to be an awful lot of body contact, a lot of strong defense here. And now it's going to come down to do you get the call or not. If you do not, you must adjust your game and play the way the game is called. Portland resting his two players with four fouls, Buck Williams and Drexler. James Edwards, off the fence, and Kersey comes down with it. Hey, Kersey and Cliff Robinson are all over the place trying to help out defensively. Three minutes gone by in the fourth. And Edwards with a hard foul on the Porter, and that'll be four on James. Last two have been kind of strange fouls for him, a push, and then that one. Right, you see, on that one, uh, you have a guard driving to the basket. He's already extended his body, so he's not high up in the air. What you should do is allow the shot to be released because uh, you have... Rodman in the game as well as Edwards to just come and take the shot clock. No need fouling, mainly because he's a great foul shooter. Six out of seven tonight. Dumars resting up, has scored only six points. Vinnie Johnson just won. The three guard explosion has been missing for the Pistons. Uh, he's been the heart and soul of their team tonight. Uh, Porter has really been going down the lane. One out of two, but 20 points in the game for Porter. You want to play two-man basketball. Isaiah and Edwards right here. Pick and roll, not there. Vinny Johnson not made a shot tonight. Danny Young giving Thomas this. Edwards goes up. They do not count the basket. It was before the shot. Wayne Cooper's foul. <laughs> Look at Chuck. He doesn't quite <laughs> under, <laughs> see that. Well, you know, first of all, I didn't like the call. He wanted a continuation. But you're happy with Edwards because he's not contented with the fadeaway jumper. And he ducks and hits his first field goal of the game after missing four. He's running uh, gingerly down the floor. No explosion in his game tonight. Robin falls down. Kersey. Strong to the hoop. Rebound by Lane Beer. He's got 15 rebounds, matching his first game high. He curses he's got to get back. Vinnie Johnson hits another one, and if he gets cooking, Rick Adelman's got deep problems. See, you cannot, you can't lose your concentration now from now to the end of the game because there is, there will be fouls going on. Offensive foul now. Kersey and that's four on Jerome. See, he wanted a foul on his drive to the basket at the other end. He did not get across half court when Vinnie Johnson hit the shot, and now he comes at the other end of the floor, gets an offensive foul. Buck Williams, who comes in with four fouls, replaces Jerome Kersey, who goes out with four. Many times a coach in a situation like this will give him a quick breather, you know, just to cool him down, let him regroup. As we all, we're right underneath eight minutes now. Vinny Johnson gets his own rebound. Three in a row for Vinny Johnson, and the lead is cut to one now. When he releases the shot, you must put your body into his chest. Block him out. Porter, loose ball. Danny Young. Boy, we're really seeing Helter Skelter passing tonight. 
Cooper goes up and a push by Lane Beer, and that is going to be number four on Bill. Strong move by Cooper. Nice pass by Danny Young, seeing that Cooper was open and he had Lambeer beaten in that area. Nose is bleeding. We have had a lot of cuts and bleeds tonight. Umars will replace Isaiah. Let's see it right here now. See how Zeke gets it here. Oh, there it is there. Flip Robin. Right. Meanwhile, Clyde Drexler has replaced Terry Porter. In the Portland lineup. Boy, Mike Abdenauer has been a busy man. Dr. Pelucci also has had a lot to do tonight. James Edwards got a gas. We saw Vinnie Johnson with the knee. Dumars as well. He's going to be left standing in this one. Cooper misses both free throws. See, they're 13 for 21. They missed eight free throws. And when you think of all of the layup opportunities in that first quarter, you know, it's uh, it, it's smiling up here. You must make the foul count. Vinny Johnson with Dumars, Rodman, Lane Beer, and Edwards stepped on the line and a turnover. Portland has Buck Williams, Kevin Duckworth in the game, and Cliff Robinson at forward, and they got Drexler and Danny Young at guard. Remember, when you're in a close game like this, plus the game is under 90 points, you know, you're saying to yourself, you've got to make the freebies on the foul line and the easy shot up there. Half looped into Drexler, winds up on the floor. He's shaken up now, and Lane Beer has picked up his fifth personal foul. See, this is two guys going for a lob pass. Depends upon the angle of the collision. Where you're coming from. Now here, see, they're looking for a lob to Drexler. Here comes Lambeer with the hit. Definite foul on Lambeer in that situation. Well, maybe a rainbow over Portland. Is that beautiful? Could be a good omen for the Trailblazers. But they are leading by only one. We'll return. Getting around anywhere these days isn't easy. Getting a long-distance call through on AT&T is, even from non-AT&T public phones. Just dial 10-ATT-0 and the phone number. AT&T. 10-ATT-0. Just to make getting through your day a little easier. AT&T. How can we help you? time machine I had 40 years. Cold filtered. Never heat pasteurized. Miller Genuine Draft. Don't worry, Judy. I'm sure the future will be a very cool place. For those who discovered its real draft taste, the world is under. Yeah, from the Pistons bench, Isaiah Thomas, of course, the nosebleed, nothing serious. James Edwards, still a little gash over the right eye, nothing serious. On the Portland bench, Clyde dressed with more a bruised ego than anything, and both trainers said, hey, nothing serious. Let's go back to that. All right, thank you, James. John Sally in for Lane Beer, who's on the bench with five persons. Next foul by Detroit is the penalty. Oh! Drexler goes up. They're going to call an offensive foul against Clyde, and Clyde now has five. That's a tough one. See, when he went down in there and he went on the reverse dribble to come back to get the shot, Dumars was in front. Keep your eye on Vinny Johnson, who has scored six points here in this quarter and gets a foul on Robinson here, and that's a tough foul when a guy is shooting so far out. See, Cliff at 6'10", excellent quick, quick feet movement, good defender, long arms. You just don't need to just challenge the shot, force, force Vinny to shoot the high lock. Jerome Kersey will replace Robinson. And we now have a tie game with 6.34 to play. There's Kersey. I love what Lampier said about Denny Johnson. You know, Denny would be an all-star in any, on any team in this league if he was the go-to guy. Make them both. It'll count. And the Pistons, after trailing by seven, have regained the lead by one with that much time remaining in the fourth. 
Well, everything is in Portland's favor from uh, a tactical standpoint. You're going to be shooting the penalty. Buck Williams misses Kersey the rebound. Let's see if it's on Edwards, and if it is, it'll be five on him. We're going to have some people foul out of this one before we're through. Well, the majority of this game at the Portland end is being played from the foul line down with an occasional three-point attempt by Derry Porter. But everything else is down in there, and it's causing a lot of congestion on rebounds, a lot of body contact, and then who is going to survive? When you get it, pump fake, gather yourself, go strong, you'll get on the foul line. Rail plays, but you got to make the shots when you get on the line. Well, you know, the reason why we said it, this is their ninth miss, and you're in a 77-76 game. It's a Detroit score, no matter what you say. What happens, it's going to be under 100. Unless we go with a double overtime. See, Detroit loves this tempo. They're very methodical offensively. They'll run the offense to death. Barry Porter back in guarding Dubar. Dubar off the glass. Another one of those shots. He got one with a second left on the shot clock the other day. Well, you'd say that was the throw, except that he does it very often. So you know that it's a shot that he practices. Rodman is on Kirsten. No foul. Good call, no foul. But there's one. That may be Sally. Detroit is in the penalty. Four on John. Keep your eye on Dumars. Now, this is very good defense. Here comes the watch. Boom. That is planned up high off the board. Remember when he hit that shot, his dad had passed away on Sunday. There's George C. Scott, and you know what team he's rooting for. He wears that. His lovely wife, Trish Vanderveer, with him tonight. Sitting right behind us, as a matter of fact. Remember what Isaiah Thomas said? That wasn't you, Joe. That was your dad that scored that basket. Tied at 79. Pick and roll. Sally all alone. You're going to trap the pick and roll. You must pick up the roll, guys. Not one Portland player was near him. Double team and Drexler's pass to Williams beat it. See, I love Drexler down in the low post area, Dick, because he can shoot over the guard, but most of all, when you double team him, he always gets the pass to the free man. Isaiah Thomas nursing the bloody nose. Dumars into Sally. Smart play by Sally, had nothing. Double on Vinnie Johnson. Edwards has it stripped away by Drexler, and here's Porter in the open court. To Clyde, foul by Dumars. And that was a smart foul by Joe. Maybe the only guy without foul trouble for Detroit. Here's our man. <laughs> you know, that's the Trailblazers logo. How many times have you seen a logo on some guy's face? Clyde well, really attacked. <laughs> Porter and Drexler have accounted for 37 points tonight. What I liked about that fast break opportunity, Porter knew that when the defense cut off his lane, he had Drexler coming down the middle, delivered a nice soft pass. Team fouls. Portland still has one to give. We've got a good one going, and we've already had two great games in this NBA final. Dick Stockton and Hubie Brown, 83 to 81 Portland, trying to stay alive, trailing three games to one to the Pistons in the championship. Valley against Drexler. That's worth the rebound. And a blocking foul called against Dennis Rodman. See, Dennis is trying for the charge on every single dribble penetration. He'll rotate over, try to help out a teammate. He's taking an awful lot of body contact, but he's, he, you know, the majority of them, he is a good one on the line, although he's missed two tonight, is Terry Porter. Detroit has had a rough night from the line, and Portland is following suit. 13 of 22 for Detroit. 
18 of 29 for Portland. There you'll see the number. One out of two, and the lead is three. Lane Beer on the bench with five. Edwards playing with five. Now you have to watch out for the high pick and roll for Vinnie Johnson. Dumars. Duckworth with another rebound. Good outlet outside the Porter. Pick and roll. Here's Kersey in the corner. Rodman tips it to himself. Four minutes remaining now in the fourth period of game five. Yeah, they'll take their time. Now this is a one-on-one. -on -one. If he feels he doesn't have it, you'll see Edwards come for the pick and roll. Here it is right now. And a foul. Isaiah Thomas just looked at Chuck Daly and put his arms out as if to say, hey, how about now? I can go in. Uh, Chuck is playing the situation. He feels that Vinny's hot. Also, Joe is playing solid. It's a tough call for Chuck right now. You know, you, when you're coaching in a situation like that, you're going with your instinct. Duckworth committing his third. Next foul on Portland will be the penalty. Same situation now. Thomas is getting up now. There you see. Joe Dumar sent, sent uh, a pick down inside so that they bring Edwards play two men. Edwards. Loose ball. Williams has it. Portland doing a terrific job in the last three to four minutes holding Detroit to one shot. Isaiah Thomas will come in. Next dead ball. Duckworth. A new playoff season high for Kevin Duckworth. 21. It's nice to see because he was falling for the ball. He wanted that ball. And that was a tough shot because Edwards was right up in his face. Three minutes remaining and a five-point lead for the Blazers. Vinny Johnson. Sally stuffs it through and it's down to three. Sally came from the corner. He was running hard. Blew right by everyone for that one. Working in. What a play by Drexler on the reverse. What a beautiful play. You can't play if anyone any better than that. Dumars is right there, forcing the reverse. Dumars. Rebound Duckworth. The lead is five, and time is starting to run down. Main thing now. You're shooting a penalty. Go to your strength right now, but don't allow too many seconds to go off the shot clock. away by Percy Buck Williams. Timeout, Detroit. Three within two minutes. How to take it, which they did back to back or piggybacked with Detroit, so now they have three and 120 remaining. One of the enforcers that we had on at the half with Pat O'Brien the other night, Maurice Lucas, guy you coached with the New York Knicks. Maurice, uh, one of the better defensive big forwards, uh, you know, probably uh, over the last 10 years. Uh, not only a an enforcer type of a player and rebounder, but also a primetime scorer. Portland Trailblazers have been on a 14-6 run ever since the Pistons took a one-point lead in the game, and they're really doing a great job off the defensive board. Well, that was a, a terrific touch pass down underneath. They're holding Detroit to one shot in most situations and doing an excellent job in forcing Detroit to stay with the perimeter jump shot. Bill Lane Beer with five fouls comes back in. So does Mark Aguirre. Isaiah Thomas is there with Vinny Johnson and John Stalley. That's the five in there for Detroit. Drexler, Porter, Williams, Percy, and Duckworth for the Trailblazers. Basket will count and a foul by Vinny Johnson. They got him on the side on that time. Vinny, Vinny just blew by, by Drexler. That is Drexler's sixth, sixth foul. foul. Okay, and yet... He came to block that shot from behind. 
20 points for Clyde, six rebounds and four assists in a magnificent performance. One shot. This is a big three-point opportunity for Detroit. Vinny Johnson, three for four tonight from there. And it's 90 to 86 with 150 to go. Danny Young replaces Drexler. Well, let's see the ball movement now. In the last two minutes, everything is ball movement, setting up your key people offensively, and you try not to waste a lot of seconds. Porter to Duckworth. Rebound Lane Beer. 16 rebounds for Lane Beer. That's the best he's had in any game in the final. Look out point lead. Vinny Johnson. Hits the basket and it's 90 to 88. Five straight points by Vinny. Well, Chuck knows you got to get Vinny the ball. He's hot right now. He feels it. That's why he's handling not Isaiah Thomas. It's all coming down to this. But Portland survives. Duckworth. In and out, Lane Deer with another rebound. And now Detroit can tie the game. He'll be patient with it. Pick and roll. Under a minute to go. Ball batted away. Excellent defense by Danny Young. Knocking that one loose. Seven on the shot clock. Vinny Johnson down the middle. Jump ball with Danny Young. Jumping with Vinny Johnson. Both coaches in a sweat right now. Yeah, I like Danny Young. He, he puts his nose in there. He's been doing uh, a real fine job for them in these three home games. Right now, we're, we're hustling again. We have that same problem as we had in the first quarter, the confrontation of who gets the spot. Jump controlled by Isaiah Thomas. 21 on the shot clock. Here's Thomas. High score at 90-90. Crowd quieting now. 7-0 run here by Portland. By De Detroit. You, know, you, you have to look at them. Lambeer says it, and it's really true. They're so tough-minded. and They have incredible concentration, especially on the road. Porter throws the ball away. Three straight times, Portland has come up empty in three possessions. And look at the expression on Rick Adelman's face. Timeout called with you. If you get a long rebound and you can go, Go with the fast break. If not, call a timeout. We'll advance the ball a half court. 29 points for Isaiah Thomas. Quickly to James Brown. All right, Dick. The only thing you need to know on this play is that Chuck Daly wants the ball in the hands of Isaiah. Let him create. He's the coach of the floor. Let's go back to Dick. Thank you, James. Rodman will inbound. They are apparently not going to guard the inbound pass to Rodman. Here's Isaiah. Well, they're going to run the clock all the way down. Now, everyone's on the baseline, so they're in a 1-4 set. That way, if Thomas beats this man, someone will have to pick him up. There's the pick out. Vinny Johnson with one second to go. His shot is good! It's 10, 7 tenths of a second. Time out, Portland. They're going wild at the Palace because they are watching one of the great teams of recent years in the NBA, Hubie Brown, with their guttiness. Well, that was just outstanding execution. They're relying on Isaiah to beat his man off the dribble. You'll see. Now watch as the player guarding Vinny Johnson comes to the trap. They throw the ball right out. Now Vinny checks the clock. You see his head, and he just said, hold up, let me take this guy off the dribble. And there it is. See, he's He's been hot, and he's been making them all for them down the stretch. 15 points in the fourth quarter for Vinny Johnson, who could not find the range at all until the final period. Well, that was a, a beautiful extension, shooting up over the top of Kersey. Look at the reaction by Chuck. Now, remember, you have seven seconds to go here. Seven tenths. Seven tenths of a second. And we have Portland with two timeouts and a 20. Now, you, you know that you can make a catch and you can get off a very good shot. Okay, the key is, is what's going to happen now of how they're going to open up that guy, whether they'll take him off one pick or two picks, how they free. There's a guy who wants to make sure that champagne stays on ice.
makes the foul shot. James Brown reports that the plan is to get the ball to Duckworth. We'll see. Well, that means if they're taken out high, Duckworth is down along the left side of the lane right now. So Detroit must be careful. They're not playing the guy out of bounds. They're not going to allow a long pass. Seven-tenths of a second. There's the shot, and the game's over, and the Pistons have won the world championship. Back to back. They did it by beating Portland three in a row on Portland's home court. We'll be back. <laughs> 21,500 celebrating the Detroit Pistons back-to-back -back NBA champions. And right now, let's go into the Pistons dressing room and Pat O'Brien. They're all gone. Look at the palace. Look at the palace. We can make some sense out of this. Here's the commissioner of basketball, David Stern, to present the trophy. Get me out of here. Bill, the first franchise in NBA history to repeat. You've got a great team. Congratulations to you, the Pistons in the city of Detroit, and all of these very nice people around here. that are really great team and to all the people back at the palace go isaiah thomas was unanimously voted mvp uh, isaiah <laughs> congratulations thanks pat is this one sweeter than the last one? Oh yeah it's much sweeter um, because we had our work cut out for us everybody doubted us all season long um, and it was a tough back road. Back Anytime back you go back to back, uh, we won only three teams to ever do it in history. And uh, this is a special team. Very special. I can't see anything. Chuck Daly. Come here. How are you? The Daly Double you got. Congratulations. Got the Daily Double. You've been, you've been hyping these t-shirts for a year. Uh, I'm not worried about t-shirts. I'm so happy because we worked so hard. And I wanted this one more than any of the last three trips. I don't know why. Just because I love it. These guys have worked so hard to do it. Will you be back next year to try it again? This, this is, this is pretty, you never know what's going to happen. Just, I don't know. I haven't made any decision. What did you think when Vinny shot one in? Hell, he's done it all in all his life. i got to get the hair right. Wait, wait. Congratulations, Coach. Uh, we're going to go to commercial, and we'll be back from a, uh, can we say, exuberant locker room after this. Anyway. our friends at the Palace of Auburn Hills. And if you could hear them now, Isaiah and Vinny, they are screaming at the top of their lungs out there inside the pad. they got no team there yet, but they'll have one soon. Vinny Johnson, the hero of the game, 
it took you a while to find your shot, but you finally found him at the right time. Oh, it couldn't have came at a better time, you know, but I hung in there. I had guys like Coach Malone here who stuck by me 100%, kept on telling me to shoot it, shoot it. Bill Lambert said, hey, I don't care if you miss 500 in a row, I'm still with you. And, you know, when guys tell you things like that, hey, you know, you get a lot of confidence in that. How many times in your life have you looked for a shot like that? All the times on the playground, you're talking it up, you say, Vinny, with no time in the clock, goes in. How many times do you do that? Oh, I, well, I tell you, I do it a lot on the court, you know, when it doesn't count, but I've never been in that situation before, and for, for it to happen to me in this situation as far as just winning this championship, there's the shot now. It's a great feeling. Did you know it was going in? It felt good. I got good slips on my jumper, and uh, I followed through real good, and it just fell for me. I was lucky. Congratulations. Bill Ambeer. Bill, get up here. Congra Congratulations. Uh, is this one sweeter than the last one? Uh, well, the first one's always the best, but this one was for us. Uh, last year was for the organization and all the people, but this year was for all the players because we wanted this very badly. What do you want to say to your fans out there in the palace? You got fans? I back, back to back and we're the world champions. No! Let's go to James Brown and Rick Adelson. Okay? All right, Pat, thank you very much. And understandably, a very subdued room over here. And I'm standing with Coach Rick Adelman of the Portland Trail Blazers. And we talked at the top of the game about you reaching deep into your bag of tricks. And you went to the very bottom. Well, we just, uh, you know, we had control of the game. And in the last two minutes, uh, you've got to give Detroit tremendous credit. They, they made every shot they had to make. And uh, we had a couple that just wouldn't go down. And uh, it ended up being, you know, Vinnie Johnson making a tough one at the end to win it. You've got to give them all the credit in the world. They're the, they're the world champions, and they showed why they are. No question that your bunch is a very classy one indeed. Again, you went your first full season here as head coach. Any nugget that you'll take away from this experience at all? Well, I think so. I told the team afterwards, I don't think I've ever been in a prouder of any situation I've ever been involved with and with this team. Uh, you know, we play these guys and lose four out of five, and, and, you know, four of the games are right down to the wire, and I think we're just starting to build something here, and we came so quick this year, and we did some things that teams have never done before, and what we want to do is, is come back to next year and respond to this. Uh, the team that beat us tonight had some failures in the past, and they did it. And that's what we want to do. Uh, we want to learn from this. But uh, again, I don't want these guys holding their head down. They deserve a lot of credit for the year they've had. From all of us at CBS, congratulations on a great run. Good luck to you next season. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. It. A very classy bunch indeed from Portland, a young team that will be heard from in the years to come. Dick and Hubie will be back with some wrap-up thoughts. Susanna, uh, all the people who are really pulling for the Pistons. I think the team was really pulling to get this one done today, really in deference to you, so you can concentrate on your family and go back down. Is that the case? Uh, yeah, I told them before the game, uh, guys, I want to go home tomorrow and have this over with. I don't want to have to come back and play anymore. And uh, guys dug down and pulled it out. I'm so happy we pulled through, man. The entire country admires your courage. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Joe. Uh, let's go back one, one more time here. What time is it? It's hammer time. Let's go back up to Dick and Hubie. 20 <laughs> seconds, Clubland. All right, Pat, thank you very much. You'll be Brown, uh, you know, a fantastic comeback by Detroit. Uh, you, you've seen teams throughout your life. Well, what, how good are the Detroit Pistons? Where do they stand in history? Well, uh, defensively, they're going to go down, if not the best, at least in the same sentence with the best. You think that they played a high-powered team like Portland, held them 12 points under their average for the entire season. That's a tribute to their great defense. You look at the three guards, the three guards will go down also in history as three of the best ever on one club. When you think of not only the clutch baskets, but the clutch three-point shooting, it's just absolutely amazing what they've accomplished. It was a five-game series, but we had three thrilling games, didn't we? Well, a tribute to defense, uh, excellent coaching staff.